In just 19 days, we have a total solar eclipse that will darken the skies for millions of people. Uh, this is going to happen from Texas all the way to Maine. It is going to be absolutely spectacular. Now, the spectacle will pass over the Lone Star State between 1210 and 310 in the afternoon central time. So that's three hours of this path to totality being in the state of Texas. Guess what? Could it impact the power grid? Hmm. Ah, a little conversation <laughs> going on. So ERCOT, if you're not a Texan, that is the organization that manages the Texas power grid. Uh, Texas is one of those special spots in America where we do it all our own, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, you know, ERCOT is the controller of that. And it is saying that, yes, it's going to be interesting here because we could see a drop from about 99% of capacity before the eclipse to 8% during the peak of totality on April 8th. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. They're not saying that they're going to have to ask customers to sort of hold back. But I think ERCOT, especially in the wake of what has happened mm -hmm. in yeah. the past, being two residents that are speaking to you that lived through not having power in yeah. winter, yeah. it was awful. It was traumatic. I think ERCOT is really trying to stand by keeping their customers in the know and having the conversation well ahead of time Absolutely. so there's no you know, weirdness of what's going to go on. And mm -hmm. You but had mentioned, too, the renewable energy yes, is so big in the state of Texas. Texas. A lot of so people don't realize that. To yes. even make mention of this and that the fact that, that the solar energy that's captured on a daily basis right. might be affected does tell you that renewables are, are starting and, to get used in the South. And, and quickly, I wanted to bring this up. During the last eclipse in 2017, mm -hmm. solar power generation did drop by about 25%. So, so they saw it. Yeah. And this is going to be a longer solar mm -hmm. eclipse than what we had in 2017. But yeah, I mean, Texas is the second largest solar producer, a third of the state. Their power is solar. Mm -hmm. The good thing is they have a surplus in gas power, natural gas uh plants and so that's how they compensate any given day i mean if you have cloud cover it's going to impact your solar and so yeah. that's where they draw it from so it looks like we're going to be a-okay but kind of an interesting conversation for texans I